Hey, hey everybody, you're listening to Fireball with Ashley Mayfield. If you appreciate videos just like this, make sure that you hit subscribe and share it with a friend. Now, buckle up and let's brace for impact. Welcome back. Today, I am going to break down why I am booked three weeks out. This is something that gets me really excited because... Well, I think that everyone should protect their time. I think at the end of the day, you have to protect the golden goose, no matter what that golden goose is for you. And it's so easy to get distracted. So let me take you back about a year and a half ago, okay? Almost two years ago. And I was in a position where business was thriving. This is definitely gonna be applicable to a variety of different places in your life. But for me, this is very business geared, okay? So for all my entrepreneurs out there, uh, people on the career path, you're definitely gonna wanna take notes. So about a year and a half ago, uh, I was just on this awesome momentum run, okay? And my organization, uh, we were blowing and going, we were doing all the things, making the most money, having the time of our life. And I am a person that I love pouring into people, okay? I love showing up on this podcast. I love showing up on YouTube. I love showing up in other ministry spaces that I'm in right now. And I love giving. If you follow me on any of my social medias, I'm constantly trying to encourage you. I'm constantly trying to entertain you. I'm constantly trying to challenge you to raise the bar. And so I found my myself, not only was I in a place in my business that was completely thriving, out of control, ignorance on fire. It was like, ah, it was intense, right? I was also in a place where I was giving, giving, giving. I was pouring out. I was pouring into people. And sometimes as high achievers, our greatest strength could be our greatest demise. I mean, forget about high achievers. That's like a human thing, right? On a human level. Sometimes your greatest thing is your greatest demise. Like I'm so stubborn, but then I can take myself out if I'm stubborn about uh, the method and not the goal. I can be um, really high energy, but that could be really annoying to people that are not in the mood, that aren't used to it, or that's not the way they receive, right? And so here I am a year and a half ago reaching, uh, you know, business is exploding, recognition coming out the wazoo, and just stepping on throats and taking names, baby. We doing what we do best, okay? And in the midst of that, I found that one of the things that really fills my cup is pouring out into people, okay? And I found that that was getting taken advantage of. And I found that not not people weren't taking advantage of me. I was letting people take advantage of me. It was my fault, right? And I found myself um, filling in the gap for people. I became... Uh, a person that would tolerate people coming to me last minute saying, hey, so-and-so couldn't pour into my team. Can I, can you please do it tonight? Well, I would say yes, because it would make me feel good. People would say, hey, this Friday, I want to do a meeting and you're so good at talking about this. Is there any way you can make it happen? And I would say yes, because it made me feel good. And so I got to this point where I became so bogged down Have you ever been so drained because you've been pouring out and pouring out and giving to people and giving to people and it felt good. It felt like I was doing something important. I was making a difference. I was making an impact in people's worlds and that freaking feels good for your ego. Like, let's be serious here. And so it felt so good and I kept doing it and it's kind of like, I don't even know. You're on the hamster wheel. It's like, you know, what is uh, in Austin Powers? Like he says, I eat because I'm unhappy and I'm unhappy because I eat. You're in this vicious cycle where it feels so good pouring out to people, but then I'm exhausting myself and I'm starting to get stressed and I'm not getting my stuff done. I'm not prioritizing what's important to me because I'm prioritizing other people, but it feels good. It's filling my cup. What do I do? What do you do when your greatest strength starts to bite you in the butt? What do you do when the thing that you love gets so out of control that you don't know how to rein it back in? So that's where you were. I'm going to walk you through why I'm booked three weeks out. So I found myself there a year and a half ago, and it was a decision that I didn't want to make, but I knew I could no longer tolerate it. I knew that I had reached a point where I was becoming so unhealthy with saying yes to everything because it brought me 
happiness and it brought me fulfillment. I get fulfilled pouring out into other people, but it was happening uh, in a very low functioning way. I had no boundaries around it. I had no respect for myself or my calendar. And I just kept dropping everything last minute to help other people. Their emergency became my utmost priority. And that is such a dangerous place to live. So I found myself stressed. I found myself overwhelmed and I found myself missing moments with my family. And it started to become an issue. My husband was like, hey, you said you weren't going to do another meeting. You're doing another meeting. You said you were going to put your phone down. Your phone's not down. You said this, but this is the reality. Fix it. And how many of you guys know sometimes we need those people in our life to let us know like, hey, you're crossing a line. Hey, you said you wouldn't make it happen and now you're doing it. And so what the heck is going on, right? And so we need those people that are going to hold us accountable even when it gets us in trouble. And so I found myself there. I found myself very overwhelmed and stressed. Stressed. So I reached out to my friend, Denise. My friend, Denise, has accomplished something so great um, in the business space that I am in. And I knew surely that she would have advice. And she is just a woman that has always encouraged me to chase after my dreams, dream big. Um, she actually has her own podcast, Denise Walsh, um, uh, Dreamcast. And so you need to make sure you go subscribe to that too, because if you like what I do, you're definitely gonna love what she does because she's just gonna make you think bigger and believe bigger. And uh, she has a lot different tone than I do, but I promise you it is all good content. And so um, I absolutely love her. And so I reached out to her and within minutes, she reached out back to me and I just said, Denise, you've been able to accomplish so much more in your business, in on your entrepreneurial journey. And I have no doubt that on your climb to greater heights than what I've done, you are just a hot commodity. And I'm, I'm saying this all very humbly, right? But it's true when you start achieving a lot of things and embracing success, like you're going to get in the limelight a little bit. And so I just said, how did you balance that out? What did you do to prevent yourself from being detrimental to play to your strength, not allow your strength to overwhelm you? But how did you set those parameters? And she gave me the best advice that has completely changed my life. And for the last year and a half, I've been embracing it. And she said, you have to tell people you're booked three weeks out. You have to tell people that you are booked three weeks out. And she uh, went on to tell me how beneficial this was to her because people started realizing she set the boundary. I'm no longer going to tolerate your emergency to be my priority. I'm no longer going to help solve your problem. That is not my job. You got yourself into this problem. You can get yourself out, right? Um, you can be more prepared. You can learn how to be a better leader. You can do all of these things. But I'm also going to make sure that I protect my strength a little bit. And I'm not just going to take things on last minute. I'm not going to get myself to this point where I'm so stressed, I'm so overwhelmed that I can't think straight, that I start uh, going with where my emotions go. And as someone who is very highly emotionally intelligent, I love my emotions. I always wish that I was that logical per person, but I'm gr grateful and super glad that I'm emotionally intelligent because I'm able to show up in a space and really thrive because I know what my strength is. Um, but for someone that is emotionally intelligent, it's really hard to tell people no. And I almost needed that scapegoat. I almost needed that excuse or that reason that could give me the opportunity to like break it to them gently. You know what I mean? Um, because it feels so good to be needed, right? Uh, community is one of our six fundamental human needs Tony Robbins talks about. And we need to be needed. We need to feel a part of a community. We need to know that we have value, that we can offer value, that we make a difference and we make an impact in people's lives. And I love that feeling. I love the feeling knowing that I play a small role in someone else's success or a small role in someone else's life. And so it was hard to be able to tell people no. So when Denise told me to tell people that I'm booked three weeks out, wow, it just made me feel so good. I was able to say no. Um, uh, I was able to say no to it being detrimental to me, but I was able to say yes to it being a benefit for them. Hey, I would love to do that. I'm actually booked three weeks out. When can we do this next month? When is there, what date is good for you next month? And now I'm setting myself up for success and I'm showing up in a positive mindset. Instead of feeling rushed, exhausted, and stressed when I show up in a capacity to serve someone, I'm able to show up in a way that is benefiting to me. So how can you do this in a way where you can still say yes to other people, but it helps you as well? Number one, I want you to write this down. Don't prioritize other people's needs above your own. I know that sounds very silly, and I know that sounds very foolish, and that probably sounds very self-centered, but there has to be a point now, yes, there's going to be moments in your life where you prioritize other people and they have to be a bigger thing 
calm down. But I am talking about like basic human fundamental things, okay? It's kind of like when I was in high school, I became a lifeguard. Do not ask me why. I do not swim very good. I came in last every time I had to recertify to be a lifeguard whenever we had to swim the mile. Literally came in last every year. And um, I'm probably not going to save you. <laughs> so, but when we became a lifeguard, they taught us when someone's drowning in the deep end, you're supposed to go in feet first. You don't dive in head first. You dive in feet first and you swim down like this. You kind of like frog it down because if you go in head first and try to grab someone, they're going to hold you under and they could drown you because they're going to be freaking out if they're drowning, right? And so you go down leg first, feet first, you wrap your legs around them and you use your arms to get up. The whole time you are protected and you are safe. You prioritize your safety, your breathing over that person. Same time whenever we get on an airplane, right? You put your oxygen mask on first before you put someone else's on because you're not good to other people if you're dead. You're not good to other people if you're drowning in water, right? And so you're really... When, when I was thinking about where I was a year and a half ago and how stressed and overwhelmed I was and not taking care of myself, not keeping my priorities a priority, I thought I was being beneficial to people. I thought I was pouring into them. I thought I was giving them my all. And I was really showing up empty because I was not taking care of myself. I was not making sure that I showed up with a mindset where I was setting them and their teams up for success. I was regurgitating old content. I was just showing up and winging it. And that's not my best. It's not my best. And if I want to show up to be my best, I have to prioritize um, my needs. I have to prioritize what's best for my schedule. And I have to say no until the time is right. So don't feel ashamed and don't put like uh, the, just the cloak of guilt and shame when it comes to prioritizing yourself. You get to do that, okay? Don't overcommit. Use a calendar. You're going to hear me say this a lot. I've been saying a lot in my podcast recently because I'm trying to like even drill it into my head, right? You need to use a calendar. Use a calendar. Use a calendar. Use a calendar. Don't say yes. Don't say, yeah, I think I can do that. Yes, let's go ahead and plan it. And if I can't, I'll let you know. Let me look at my calendar and I would get back to you. I would love to do this. I can't say yes before I look at my calendar. If you prioritize the system, people don't duplicate, systems do. Your calendar is a system of protection for you. It is, a, it is a boundary for you. And so you have to make sure you're looking at a calendar. I've said yes to so many people and, with, and then 24 hours later looked at the calendar and realized I couldn't. And you look foolish. You look foolish. You don't look competent. You don't look like you got your crap together, okay? And so uh, I had to start saying, I'm booked three weeks out. Let me look at my calendar. Let's get it in my calendar, okay? That way I can make sure that it happens. Now, are there things that come up that are last minute along the way? Yes. Um, if there's like, if I'm onboarding new people into my business, I'm not gonna tell them I'm booked three weeks out. But the three weeks out is above and beyond for things that aren't normally in my day to day, okay? So probably should have said that up front, but there you go. So there's that. So don't overcommit. If you're using a system, if you're using a calendar, you're not going to overcommit your schedule. You're not going to run from meeting to meeting to meeting where now you're not eating. You're not saying hi to your kids when they walk through the door. You're not uh, having like eye contact with your spouse, right? Don't overcommit. It is not your job to be everybody's teacher, everybody's nurse, everybody's caregiver, everybody's coach, everybody's savior. You are not that. Stop overcommitting. No is a full sentence. My, I'm already booked. I'm sorry. Don't know what to tell you. I'm already booked. Uh, if you, if it's that important, if you need me that bad, you'll wait till I'm available. That's it. That's it. If it's that important to you, if my gift is that important to you and you really want me, you will wait. And if you don't want me, if you're just coming to me because you think I'm going to say yes and you're in a crunch and it's an emergency on your end, just because it's an emergency on your end does not mean it needs to be a priority on my end. Amen? Amen. Um, the last thing I think that it's going to help you do, so uh, number one, uh, don't prioritize other people's needs above your own. Number two, don't overcommit. Number three, you really do have to protect yourself from yourself. And that's where I found myself a year and a half ago is how do I protect myself from myself? How do I know that I have value to offer, that I want to pour into other people, that I want to show up? I not only want to meet their need, I want to excel when I do it but I have to protect myself from myself because I cannot show up late last minute and sloppy. I cannot show up uh, by the skim of my teeth. I cannot show up in a space where I'm not being my best, giving my best, doing my best, serving my best. And if I'm overwhelmed, overloaded, stressed out, and all these things in between, I'm not protecting myself from myself. 
I'm actually setting myself up for failure, right? And so you have to have these safeguards saying I'm booked three weeks out protects me from me. How bad am I? How serious am I when it comes to my commitment? How serious am I? We're making sure that I'm keeping the golden goose, the golden goose, and I'm protecting that at all costs. And I am my golden goose. I am my life. I am my business. I am my sauce, right? I am the wife to Jason. I am the mother to Gator and Peanut. Like I am these things. So I have to protect myself from myself. And in order to do that, you've got to have these parameters where you say, I'm booked three weeks out. I'm booked three weeks out. And maybe you're not in a business. Maybe you have family members that like to take advantage of you. Hey, can you run these errands for me? I'm booked three weeks out. And maybe for you, it's not three weeks. Maybe you're like, hey, this week isn't going to work. If they don't, if they, they got to wait, uh, it'll, you know, you, you're delayed a week. I can't do anything this week. I'm booked, but what do you look, what does it look like next week? What does it look like the next appointment? But I'm, when you call me in a pinch, I'm not just going to pick up and say yes to you. If it's a, if it means that I have to hurt myself, if it means that I suffer just to help you, I might not say yes because I have priorities because I am a priority too. And I am important as well. And again, I'm not talking about trivial things that come up that are an emergency. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about protecting yourself from yourself. You constantly say you need to stop, but you still do it because it fulfills you. Well, It's also going to hurt you if you don't get it under control. So I hope you found value. If you did, share this with a friend that's getting really overwhelmed, that keeps overcommitting, that's like destroying themselves, where they can implement, I'm booked three weeks out. We'll call it the Denise method. That's fine. Uh, But I am telling you, this absolutely changed my life, and I know it's going to change yours. Until next time. 